Hey, what's up guys, I'm KBHD here, and how about those Chromebooks, huh? Many of us have thought that Chromebooks were a dead or dying breed, but one of them has been the number one best-selling laptop on Amazon since the first day that it was introduced. So what's going on here? Chromebooks have been doing really well as very cheap, but also very easy to use laptops. They're basically a $250 laptop that you can get for mom or grandma or something like that, and it just runs Google Chrome. You can use all the Chrome web apps and everything like that, and it's been doing pretty well just as a basic product like that. A couple of weeks ago, a very interesting video came out uh, that sort of showed a high-end looking Chromebook with a sort of a retina display and all these really interesting things that we would have loved to see but never really happened, but it was sort of dismissed as sort of a, a non-real product. But yesterday, Google came out with, announced, and made available the Chromebook Pixel. It's real. And uh, looks sort of a bit like a squared off MacBook Pro. It looks good, and uh, the specs are actually high end. So start off with the display. That's basically the highlight of the hardware. This thing's called the Chromebook Pixel because it is a 13 inch 2560 by 1700 display, which gives it a pixel density of 239 pixels per inch. That makes it the number one highest pixel density on any laptop display out there. It's also a three by two aspect ratio, which you might think is a little bit weird, especially if you're gonna do media consumption on this thing. But when you think about it, it's a Chromebook. You're gonna be using this thing entirely for web browsing and media consumption. And for that, extra vertical pixels are better than not enough, especially when pretty much every website scrolls down. You wanna be able to fit as many things as possible on that display, so the extra pixels are definitely helpful. And then, it's a 400 nit display. That's the brightness level. This here happens to be a 300 nit display, and it's a high-end display. So the display on the Chromebook Pixel is already very high-end, and it's touchscreen. So the touchscreen layer adds a whole new level of interaction and sort of a media experience. You can, you know, tap it just like it was sort of an Android tablet. You can tap to play and pause videos. You can tap to actually click the way you'd use a mouse. It's sort of the same way we've seen Windows 8 touchscreen laptops. So this is absolutely a really high-end display and that's probably why they named it the Chromebook Pixel. Inside is a dual core 1.8 gigahertz Core i5 processor with integrated graphics. And around the outside, it does look pretty good. It's made of anodized aluminum. It has has two USB 2.0 ports, a mini display port, and an SD card reader, and up top is an HD webcam. There is a Wi-Fi only version of this guy for 32 gigs, and that's basically $1,300. And there's an LTE version of this guy that has 64 gigs of storage. All the links for that will be down below, right below the like button on this video. So it seems like in terms of pure specs, this thing is shooting at the 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro plus a touchscreen. But then you consider the fact that this entire package fits in a 3.4 pound body that's just 16.2 millimeters thick, which is actually thinner and lighter than that 13 inch MacBook Pro. There's been a lot of talk about the price of the Chromebook Pixel. At $1,300 base price, it seems a little bit high, very high actually, but when you think about it, it still seems very high. But let's take a step back and consider the purpose of this machine, the real reason it actually exists right now. And for that, we take a look at a quote from Google's blog, which says, this brings together the best in hardware and software and design to inspire the next generation of Chromebooks. Hmm. This is a Halo product. This is the Nexus 10 and the Nexus 4 of Chromebooks. This is the inspiration for the next hardware manufacturers to start making Chromebooks that are actually high-end and from high-end specs. Right now, all we've seen so far is $250 and $300 cheap plastic HP and sort of basic Chromebooks. This is the inspiration for the next generation of high-end Chromebooks. So in its creation, it's not even really made for the typical consumer. It's not made to sell well. It's not a flagship. It's just a Chromebook. So what is the real purpose of this Chromebook Pixel? Well, Jean-Louis Guyen on Google Plus put it best in his post. The Chromebook Pixel is really just an experiment, but it's one that's crucial for Chrome OS. It may not sell well at all, in fact, it probably won't, and the Chrome team may not care how well it sells after all. What they will watch closely is what happens next, specifically in the Chrome Web Store. This is similar to what this Nexus One did for Android. Consider the two biggest complaints you've heard about Chromebooks in the past few years. One, it's cheap hardware, and two, it lacks powerful apps. So the critics have called it just a glorified web browser, and to them, the Chromebook Pixel looks exactly the same as the rest. Most early reviews will conclude that it's too expensive or the hardware is premature, but as we've seen repeatedly in blog posts and videos from Google, the Pixel really is for what's next. What today's announcement shows is Google has chosen to address hardware first, 
In doing so on its own, they're not relying on Samsung or Acer or HP or anyone else, and they're doing so boldly. No longer are Chromebooks synonymous with budget hardware, they can be cutting edge, and specs are no longer an excuse. Now we have high-end hardware. So now the hardware is out of the way, Chrome OS really needs to step up. It needs cutting edge applications to make it more than just a glorified web browser. The Chrome team has known this for a while and they certainly know it today. It's the missing element, what they need. It's what consumers have said are keeping them from adopting Chrome OS or switching completely from Windows or Mac. Users need powerful productivity apps and games and even photo and video editing apps and the web store has to be better, it has to offer that. The groundwork has now been laid over all these years with the cheap Chromebooks, and Google needs the developers to make the rest happen. They also need a Chromebook to get excited about. That's the Pixel. So over the next few months, you'll see Google doing its best to get the Pixel in the hands of, and the minds of, as many developers as possible. In fact, the Pixel will probably be given out for free to developers at Google I.O. this year. Meanwhile, the Chrome team will continue to push development until the web is all users really need, reducing hardware dependencies and bringing in things from Android like notifications and Google Now. So when the apps become powerful enough and the Pixel is powerful enough, Chromebooks will become more than just a glorified web browser in the eye of the mainstream consumer. And that is the gamble that Google made today. So in the end, the Chromebook Pixel is a Halo product. It is sort of a beginning and a sort of an entry into a new market that doesn't really exist yet, but it's Google pioneering the way where it wants others to follow. It's paving that path that it wants manufacturers of other Chromebooks to start to follow to make high-end new generation of Chromebooks. And the reason, sadly, that it is so expensive is that touchscreen. It's that it better be a really good touchscreen in order for it to be so expensive. My biggest problem with touchscreen laptops was actually pressing it. The hinge would bend and it would wobble back and forth. This needs to be a great touchscreen to justify me paying $1,300 for it. Now, all that being said, I still haven't held one yet. I haven't actually held it. So expect a video on it coming up in the next few days when I get my hands on one. Until then, I will leave you with my Chrome OS explained video, which is down below, first link in the description. But yeah, that's it. So hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. And this was the Chromebook Pixel explained. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.